So I'm going to give you a little bit of the history. This is our patient. He's a 61-year-old gentleman that presents to the emergency department. His chief complaint was shortness of breath and fatigue. Um, I've given you his vital signs here. He has a blood pressure of 86 over 50, respiratory rate of 32, temp of 99.4, and he's satting 88% on room air. His past medical history, he does have a history of COPD, heart failure, as well as coronary artery disease. As part of your history, I will tell you that the, the client says that he wakes up short of breath, He's had a 12 pound weight gain over the past several weeks, along with some increasing extremity edema. And on your physical assessment, he has dyspnea and he has crackles in bilateral lung fields. He's tachypnic and he looks anxious. He's sitting upright in bed. He's using his accessory muscles and with some ICSC retractions. And the client says that he's been using his inhaler without any relief. So given that scenario, what's your initial impression? What, what's most concerning? Would you, well, first of all, would you consider this patient to be stable or unstable? Pretty unstable, right? Yes. His symptoms, the dyspnea, the fatigue, the edema, and the hypotension are all troublesome findings, right? Given his history of the heart failure, the COPD, and the coronary artery disease, these clinical manifestations send up red flags for a number of different diagnoses. And <clears throat> that's kind of my next question to you. Is this a cardiac problem? Is it a respiratory problem or both? Because it could be an exacerbation of a COPD, could be a pulmonary embolism, he could be having an MI, maybe it's just a pneumonia, or maybe it's his heart failure getting worse. So his symptoms can actually mimic many other potential diagnoses. And that's an important concept because many cardiac and respiratory diagnoses do present with similar symptoms and it's important to consider those other potential diagnoses. So at this point I haven't really given you any additional diagnostic information but using your critical thinking skills you already were able to recognize that this patient is unstable and he's in some distress. Now <clears throat> I didn't give you any labs yet, but we would probably want to get some additional labs. And my question now is, is there any concern for some renal impairment on this, on this patient? With the presentation that I gave you, would there be any concern that this patient might also have some renal involvement? Yes, absolutely there is. When blood flow is reduced to our major organs, uh, to the systems, their functions are altered, right? Specifically, when the kidneys experience hypoperfusion, their functions, um, it's difficult for them to maintain a fluid balance and successfully actually filter waste products. So renal dysfunction is a common side effect of heart failure, and it can lead to imbalances such as hyponatremia on our patient. So the renal and the cardiovascular system greatly affect one another because of their correlation together. When the patient has reduced cardiac output, there's a reduction of renal blood flow, which results in renal insufficiency. So a nice way that I like to remember this is that the urine output is the poor man's tool for cardiac output. Now let's take a think, of, uh, think about what additional diagnostic studies would you anticipate that we would probably want for this patient? What kinds of what kind of diagnostic studies do you think? An arterial blood gas. Excellent. What else? Anything else you can think of? Creatinine. Okay, good. Look at its GFR. Look at his uh, kidney functions. BUN. Yes. 
So some of the more common labs that we would probably see ordered for this patient, we would want to look at, we certainly would want to get a chemistry panel. So we'll look at our CBC. We're going to look at our electrolytes because we just said um, volume status can have a big impact on things. So if he either has hypervolemia or hypovolemia, it's going to be reflected in some of our labs. And you'll see that a lot in electrolytes. Maybe a BNP. BNP, we know, is a substance that's secreted in response to the changes in the ventricular pressures. So he does have a history of heart failure. We'd be looking at BNP. Um, troponin, because we said, is he having an MI? We can rule out an MI. Well, let's get a blood glucose on him. Let's look at liver enzymes. There's your arterial blood gas that you mentioned. We probably should get a chest x-ray because we did, we said, you know, is it a pneumonia? Is it COPD? Uh, let's, um, and an EKG to rule out any uh, uh, or cardiac disease. So remember, a lot of our diagnostic studies, when we get them, they're either going to help confirm or they're going to rule out other possible diagnosis.